We do indeed, Taylor, we have little warthogs on the airstrip, which is their favourite place to be. They like it because it's nice and open, there's lots of nice grazing here, and there's water around that they can go and wallow in when it gets a bit warmer. So it's the perfect place if you are a warthog. And they've got some impala friends that are their security system, so they'll be looking out for any signs of predators. And so the warthogs can go about their business completely unfazed about what's going on around them. And what it looks like is a mother with her offspring from last year, so the October set of babies, um, that are all just feeding around there and, like I say, taking it very, very easy on this beautiful morning. There we go, there she goes. Hello, Mom. Well done to raise so many little piglets. It's not easy to raise piglets out here. I've actually seen many leopards hunting the warthogs of Arethusa airstrip. I've seen cheetah hunting them and lions and wild dogs. So it's to raise warthog babies on this particular airstrip is not for the faint-hearted. So she's done very, very well to have as many as she's got. Oh, that's quite funny. The little baby to the right sends her. It's now coming into frame. But there was oxpeckers all over it and it had a little meltdown about all the oxpeckers and started bucking and sort of bouncing around. I wonder if the other one's going to do it. Let's see, with all the oxpeckers on it, maybe it'll do the same thing. And those two to the right have been full of nonsense this morning. They've been chasing one another. Oh, hello. Toilet time. This is what happens when you are bucking and bronking and chasing other animals. And your bowels start to get moving. Um, and they've been chasing one another around and lots of attitude. The one even was having a little bit of attitude with mom, which is not clever because mom is much bigger than what they are and will discipline them quite quickly. And it seems like they've calmed down a bit. I wonder if the birds are going to trigger them to start moving around again. And those are young oxpeckers as well. You can see the impalas that are busy running past and flashing past the screen. So those are all young impalas that are just playing and there goes our warthog. Look at it go. <laughs> they got a fright because the impalas were running. So that's why they all ran as well. Very, very cute. I love when they bounce along with their tails up. Right. Well, let's go see if we can't find this jackal towards the southern side of the airstrip. And while we do that, let's go across to Jamie, who's got some little dwarf mongoose to show all of you. I do, I do. And I'm really sorry they're going to disappear in just a few seconds because I'm going to have to move. I'm sitting right in the middle of the main road and somebody is very clearly quite desperate to get past me. And just hold on one second. We're going to have to switch on. Sorry, Bubba. Oh, look, it's nice and brave. All right, let me just get off the road. No. Nope. We'll go back to them. We'll go back to them. Hold on one second. Uh, interestingly enough, interestingly enough, there's a lot of alarm calls just to the south on Little Gauri, which I think, I'm almost certain that's where Hosanna and Shungile are. Unfortunately, that is south of our boundary, so we can't go there, but I'm lurking here just in case they decide to come north. All right, now, of course, our little mongoose are going to have vanished, but let's try... I can see the rest of them in that termite mound. I think all of them have left. Oh, no, there's one still in the stump. There's one. Let me shift my head out of the way. I think this is a slightly better position. Let me duck out of your way. Here we go. My first proper mammal sighting of the morning, apart from a vanishing hyena and a vanishing warthog. And definitely one of my favourites to stop and see. And, of course, winter mornings, dwarf mongoose tend to be late risers. They are not morning creatures. Most of us safari guides are morning people, but dwarf mongoose are not. And they like to wait until it's much warmer and they can... Yes, I know! What are we? I have that little body language. Look at those bright brown curious eyes. So for our new viewers, these little chaps are roughly from nose to tip to tail, about the length of my forearm, and they weigh around about 300 grams. So the smallest of our mammalian members of the order Carnivora. And you've got something dangling from your lip. When you crawl around in logs and termite mounds, you tend to acquire spider webs, which then sticks all sorts of other things onto your fur. They look so pretty and shiny. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>
Look at the curiosity in this body language. Okay, run forward. I'm gonna run forward a little bit more. What is this? Is it a threat? Can I eat it? Can I play with it? Little nose twitching away. Uh, you might notice a few heat haze waves that's coming up from Wendy's bonnet. It was the only way I could position myself. So if you've noticed that your picture appears to be a bit wavy, that's because Ferg is filming over the top of the bonnet and Wendy's feeling warm this morning, unlike the rest of us. Come on. Ooh, that change in body language. Sally in Oregon, you say such cute little faces. Mm-hmm. Absolutely irresistible, are they not? But don't be fooled. Anyone who's ever been bitten by a mongoose can tell you just how sharp their teeth are. But they are sweet. There's something, I think it's their ears as well. The funny little ears that they have positioned so close to their heads. Everything about them is designed to be sleek. And able to disappear into tiny bolt holes if they need to. Let's see how they respond. Just two generic squeaking noises. I'm not particularly well versed in dwarf mongoose, but I can make squeaking sounds. There are the rest of them at the back there on the termite mount. 